Hello and welcome to another one of the Unit 14 Compute Hardware videos. This time it's on the tools that you use to install and maintain hardware. So when you change things in the computers, you will need a specific set of tools to do those and we're going to talk about what those tools are today. So, specialist tools are needed when you build a computer. Um, you have to keep your computer maintained on a regular basis, otherwise it will stop working, it will start overheating, hard drives will get clogged up with too much information or information all over the place and need to be sorted out. It will start making the computer slow down, it will start making the computer work harder. Harder a computer works, more likely you are to break some of the components on it. Um, some of the tools we're going to talk about for when you're maintaining things are for your safety or the safety of the computer itself. Um, some of them are physical tools, so things that you hold onto or attach to yourself, but some of them will be software tools as well, because you have to do some maintenance of the computer using software as well as using tools themselves. So, let's have a little look and see what we've got as the first one. So, the first one, and we seem to be missing an image, that's very lax of me, I'll just stand here and make it look like there's an image of interesting stuff. Um, you have antistatic mats and antistatic wristbands. These are, the wristbands are, oddly enough, bands that go around your wrist that then have a little cable attached to them to a point that's grounded. Now that means that if you've built up a whole load of electricity, aesthetic electricity in your body, which you can easily do by walking around on carpets and that kind of stuff, um, it means that that electricity will be conducted away from you. So when you touch a very sensitive part of the computer, you don't suddenly shock that computer with all of your aesthetic electricity and blow up that particular component. It could be a processor, it could be a RAM, you give it too much of an electric shock, it's going to stop working. So we need to make sure that that's not happening. So you're stopping yourself from damaging your components. Um, and an anti-static mat, it's a black mat, or whatever color it might be, it's normally black. It's a mat that goes on top of, uh, underneath your computer, your computer goes on the top of it on the desk. And that also isolates the computer from any static electricity that might be built up into the desk. If you've got a metal desk, it's going to be conducting electricity. If something else gets electricity, or gets electrified on part of that desk for some reason, it can transfer the current into your computer and into your components if you don't have a mat to isolate it from the rest of the table. Um, you also have, with some of the wristbands, some of the wristbands go into a power socket. Now the good thing about those ones is not only do they conduct any static electricity away from you, but should your machine do something horrible and give you a massive electric shock of 200 50 volts or 600 watts, whatever type of power supply you have in there, it will hopefully conduct all that nasty electric shock away from you before it goes into important parts of you like your heart and your brain and other places like that, which we don't really want. So it can protect the computer, it can also protect you. So that is the antistatic mat and wristbands, both very important things. You should always wear them when you're doing any maintenance or installation on a computer. Next one, rubber mat. So this one, rubber mat, just goes on the floor and it stops you from building up static electricity by moving around on the carpet. So the rubber mat will insulate you from that, stop you building up any more electricity and that will help, like we said before, stops the computer getting an electric shock in the components. So now we've got some pictures finally and now one of these lovely links has come up. So should you want this picture, Follow that link and you'll find it. Although I'm sure you could just Google crosshead screwdriver and you'd find it as well. Crosshead screwdrivers are what you normally have to use um, when you're trying to get into your computer. Now, when you do your practicals in college, we have special cases that have easy, nice, quick release uh, locks on them. So you don't actually have to have a screwdriver to get into those. But if you buy a computer uh, from a shop or something like that, and you want to open that, you'll need to use a crosshead screwdriver. Number one, you need to use it to get into the case. So the case will be held on with a couple of crosshead uh, screws. And also, once you've opened it up and you put something like a new graphics card in, you probably need to put another crosshead screw in to keep it in place. The same with things like new hard drives or, three, or new CD drives. You normally need to put three different um, screws into those to hold them in position. So crosshead screwdriver, very, very useful, probably the most used tool on anybody's IT kit. Head torch. Haven't got any writing on this because it's obvious. It's a torch that goes on your head and it makes things that are in the dark light up. 
inside of computer cases is normally very dark. Have a head torch on, it means you can light it up without having to hold a torch in your hand, which means you can see what you're doing, use both hands, and still have some light. So, nothing much in the way of explanation even than that. Next one, tweezers and a magnetic pickup tool. Also not much explanation needed for this. The one thing with the little cross-headed screws that you use in the computer is they're really good at being dropped and falling inside the computer and rolling under the motherboard and things like that. Places that you can't get them. So rather than just picking the machine up and shaking it until the things come out, which isn't the best plan, uh, you have things like tweezers that you can put in little gaps and pick up things, and a magnetic pickup tool, which is basically just a telescopic pole, little, little stick, with a magnet on the end. So if you've dropped the screw, you can just clink, pick it up, and it comes off. So nice, easy way of picking up things that have been dropped or have got moved or have fallen out from where they're supposed to be and have gone into places that are inaccessible. You can use those to get hold of them. Right, next one. Multimeter. Look like these. You have two different um, sensing prongs. I don't know if you know what you'd call those. Yeah, I can't think of it off the top of my head. But basically, what you do, you set this for a certain amount of voltage, whether it's either a very low voltage or a high voltage, and then you can start measuring how much resistance is in a particular part of the computer circuit, or if there's power going into a different part and it comes up with the amount of power in here. It's just a way that you can use to sensors. That's the word I was thinking. Ah, probes. That's the word I wanted. Probes. Yeah. So these are probes. Um, you put them on the computer. If there's an electric current going between them, it'll register on the display. Uh, you can also check things like resistance and that kind of stuff. Next one. Can of compressed air. Right. We have already talked about heat sinks and fans. Remember, the processor gets incredibly hot, and to keep it cool, it has a heat sink, which has lots of tiny little fins next to each other, which it then conducts all the heat away from, and then the fan blows all the hot air away. Because it's continually getting a circulation of air, it's getting a lot of air going through it, it kind of sieves all the dust out, and all the dust collects inside the heat sink. If your heat sink is full of dust, it's not going to be able to get rid of the air that's hot, and it's going to reduce the amount that it can cool the processor. If it gets too bad, your processor can overheat. So what you do, you have your trusty can of compressed air, and you give the whole thing a good blast in it. Blast it really quite hard, blasts all the dust out the way, gets it out of the heat sink, means that everything, all the air can flow nice and clearly through there again, and it will keep your processor much cooler. So that's something you could do um, every six months or so, probably enough. But if you've had a computer for a year and you open it up, there's thick, thick dust inside there. It's really quite nice. Right, now we're on software tools. So, this is the first one I'm going to talk about. It's disk cleanup tools. As you use a computer, when you're doing installation of different things, you get temporary files on there. When you're looking at different internet pages, it will save them so you can view them offline automatically. Uh, when you use the recycle bin and you don't empty it, a lot of the time you're just going to have files lying around on your hard drive that you don't need anymore, that you don't use, that are just taking up space. So what the disk cleanup tool does is it will scan through your hard drive and it will tell you how many bits of space you've used, how much you've got left over, and it will then go through when it scans it, and it will then go through and try and find as many different files as it can that it thinks you don't need anymore. And then you can just put them all in one place and you can say, yep, yeah, I'll delete that one, I'll delete that one, I'll delete that lot, I'll delete that lot, and then it gets rid of it and you have a bit more space on your hard drive. Remember, when your hard drive starts to get full, and you've only got a little bit left, about 15% less or less, that's when your computer starts to really slow down. So you want a decent amount of hard drive space. So, very important to keep it nice and clean, or keep your, run the disk clean up, to get rid of any files that you don't need, so you're not using up any unnecessary space. That is your disk cleanup tool. Next one. Disk defragmenting tool. Right, this one's a little bit more complicated. When you save stuff on the hard drive, and then delete it, and then put another bit on. If you think of the hard drive as this whole block here, the white bit is a bit that's not being used, and the blue bits are where you have a solid block of data, and then all the other colors are where you have just little gaps and odd bits of data, and stuff is scattered all over the place. Now that's not ideal, because if you want to find something, and you've got, so maybe you want to find an image file, 
you've got a bit of the VME file in this bit of the hard drive, a bit of the VME file over here, another bit in this little gap here, another bit in this little gap here. It takes a while for the computer to find all those different parts and assemble them together. What the disk defragmenter does is it moves everything around and just puts it in one big block. So rather than having to search for the whole hard drive, if we were the whole of this lot to try and find something, it will just take all of these gaps out and just make it into a smaller chunk so the computer says, oh, I only need to look in this bit. This one's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad to defragment it. But if you think if it's all this space as well with just full of little bits, you'd have to look in the whole of the hard drive to find the file that you're looking for. Whereas if you organise it, so you get rid of all these gaps, put everything in one place, it's much quicker to access your work, much quicker to access your files, and that will speed up your computer in no end. So, good thing to do every once in a while. If you have an SSD drive, you don't have to worry. You don't have to defragment those. It doesn't make any difference. But a normal hard drive, very important that you do it every once in a while. It will help to speed up your machine. Uh, then antivirus. Obvious what that is. Viruses, as you know, are malicious pieces of software that can trash your machine. Um, it will scan your computer for it. It will delete any viruses that it comes across. Um, it will hopefully detect any viruses that come in when you're looking at stuff and it, if you get a suspicious link or email sent to you it will hopefully tell you that's also looking a little bit dodgy. The important thing is with the antivirus is that you keep them up to date. New viruses are being made all the time by people with too much time on their hands that just want to see other people suffer. So no antivirus that you buy today will be valid in a couple of weeks time because people will have made some more viruses so it won't be able to protect you. So you have to have them updated on a regular basis. New virus definitions come out as people discover new viruses and new ways of getting around them. So you need to keep your antivirus up to date to make sure that everything is kosher and you're not going to have any problems. And that's a lot. That are, those are all the hardware and software tools that you need to make your computer run nice and smooth and install any new parts and keep it running at peak performance. Thank you very much.